You know, when I say I'm gonna start at 10.30, I start at 10.30, not, not at 10.31, not at 10.33. All those live shows, like fashion shows and stuff that broadcast live on Instagram and this, you know, sh starts at eight. 8.15, 8.20, like, you had nothing better to do with your time, right? <laughs> what is up? Oh, it was a fire truck. Check it out. Anyway, uh, it's a brisk and crisp morning in autumn. How many people watching? Six. Wow, George, you're really getting there. God, I'm rolling in it. Woo! You're a star, kid. I just don't like broadcasting on Instagram and Twitter because the signal drops, the quality is substandard. It's, you know, I'm, you know, I would love to do it natively in the app, but I have such a bad experience with it. The quality sucks asshole and I'm not going there. Instagram's live video blows. It like, it's, it's like, it's like it, you would think over time it's getting worse, it would get better. It's getting worse actually. It's six very special people. Ooh, now we got up to 19. My God, I'm climbing. You guys, the ratings are through the fucking roof. I'm major. Oh my God. 20 people watching. I'm gonna get a book deal. Um, <laughs> we're gonna cast you in something. That Well, we're not allowed to do that. I am fucking casting director Poison. No one ever fucking looks at me. Um, God. What was I saying? Look, the leaves are really starting to change here in the park. I'm going to flip the camera and give you guys a little vis on what the... Uh, look at this. Okay, so it's green. It looks almost still quite summery, but if you look carefully, like, that's not sunlight hitting those trees. That's changing, like, over there. That's, that's a fading tree. That's a fading tree right there. It almost looks like it could be sunlight and you're just getting different values of light, but no, this is actually leaves changing, although that is sunlight peeking in over there. So a little, perhaps a little visually deceiving, but the real foliage, I don't think is gonna kick in, you know, it'll kick in full tilt boogie probably in a couple of, you know, a week or so, maybe a couple of weeks, I, I forget. But anyway, it's quite beautiful. And there's that gorgeous arch. Oh, hello. You're a wild man, George. Yeah, you know me, crazy. So I'm walking with my dogs who love to play tug of war with me because God forbid they ever have an interest in anything that is within the same three foot circumference. Um, what did I watch last night? Well, my scary movie of the night last night was Halloween. The sequel, you know, just shares the same name as the one, as its 40-year-old original. I am now into the David Gordon Green revisit sequel trilogy, which I really like. You know, I'm such a fan of the franchise. Well, I'm a fan of the original movie. It kind of ends there. I didn't mind Rob Zombie's uh, remake, reinvention. He did a Halloween and a Halloween 2. I didn't mind it at all. My only problem is that, well, it played the sibling card, which was a bullshit thing that John Carpenter never even really liked. It played the sibling card and, um, uh, it's just like Rob Zombie loves portraying squalor. And, you know, yes, it's, 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 uh, you know, it makes for really fun work for the art director, but man, it makes me just like, it almost gets you sick to your stomach. Like these people's kitchens in a Rob Zombie movie. Like, I just want to barf a little bit. Like, oh, it really makes me queasy and get rid of my gum. 
Um, and also Rob Zombie's Halloweens were incredibly violent, like really violent. That said, Halloween Kills, hence the title, uh, the middle piece to David Gordon Green's trilogy, Halloween Kills, is, uh, is also very brutal. Very brutal. And then you get to Halloween Ends, which I saw, and I liked, you know. Um... Michael's getting older. It's four years later, Michael's getting older. He's kind of like, it's odd, like he's, he's losing stamina. Yeah. I mean, he's still the champ, the OG, in terms of crazy, brutal slaughter. However, it's uh, pretty crazy. Um, yeah, and everybody gets back to it. I can't watch those movies. You guys, it's Halloween, it's October. <laughs> it's all about horror movies. <laughs> October is all about scary movies. It just is. That's tis the season. You know what I can't stand? Christmas movies. Those scare me. Rom-coms? Those scare me. I'm worried that Bros is going to be a horror movie for me. On so many levels. I can't. The new Clooney and Julia? Maybe. I mean, they do work well together. I love them in the Oceans movies, but. Did I watch Dahmer? Again, dirty. And also, I wonder, I fear that um, Ryan Murphy is kind of like becoming um, the Tyler Perry of gay content. Like, it's a little too much, and it's like, Ryan Murphy is spreading himself very thin, and the quality is giving way to quantity. You know, it's like he wants to be on every device, on every channel and everyone's like, but at the cost of quality, like it can't all be good. You know, the, the feedback on the watcher, the watchers or watcher, or whatever the hell this thing is with the true story that just launched, the review is horrible. And I want it to be good. Like the premise looks really great, but everyone like unanimously is like, Ugh. and I'm just like, I'm not gonna invest my time. So. What I really would like Ryan Murphy to do is to take like five years off, you can afford to do it, take five years off and just write and direct something yourself that you really care about instead of, you know, trying to, you know, be the Tyler Perry or Oprah Winfrey of gay related content. You know, like there's a lot of Ryan Murphy stuff out there, but man, like I would have been happy if you just focused on American Horror Story and made sure it was good because the wheels came off that sh franchise like after Coven. Like, come on, man. You know, and I like Ryan Murphy. That's the thing. Like, I like Ryan Murphy. I like what grabs his interest. You know, like when he was doing, when, he, when I found out he was doing the Halston series, I was like, perfect. My God, someone should visit that. When I liked it, you know, when he was doing um, the Clinton Lewinsky movie, Impeachment, whatever, I was like, great, we could use a real sort of like dramatic deep dive into that. You know, American crime story, whatever the fuck he does. Like, these are things that we, like, in terms of pop culture, like, that we care about. And he's got his, he's got a real good sensibility about that. And I love the idea of some of the American Horror Story seasons, but the execution, like it's just like, it's, you're like, uh, and then drop the ball. Cause it was just like, you know, the premise is cheesy or something, you know, something's missing. And it's just, I, this is a guy who's spreading himself too thin. Like he's putting his imprimatur on things. Uh, but you know, it's like, um, Jack Dorsey running Twitter when he was too busy with Square. You know, he was CEO of two companies and one of them suffered. Like, Ryan Murphy's trying to do too much and the products suffer. Too much, dial it back, dude. Of course I'm watching Handmaid's Tale. Um, I do wanna see the movie Smile. Maybe I'll go see that tonight. That looks really fun. Smile looks really great. And also got good reviews. 
which is odd for a horror movie. Like, horror is a movie that critics don't like to... Horror is a genre critics don't love to hate. You know, I will watch episode one, maybe episode two of American Horror Story NYC. I will give it a chance. But I am guessing, like, like I watched the first two episodes of Dahmer. And I liked it. And it's just so dark and dingy and I wanted to take a shower. Like physically, like Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment made me nauseous. I know it's probably very realistic and Dahmer was a sick, freaky fuck. But yeah, it's just, I couldn't do it. Um, I'm not going for any gay ice cream today. Um, guys, here's the deal. And I'm writing a little post about it for the blog too. And I know it's minor, but this is me. And this is like, you know, this matters to me and probably nobody else. But, um, I may finish some of the Lindsay just pipes in the Dahmer series was excellent. I should probably stick with it. You know, but just like I, that kind of dirty squalor. Oh, and also when you talk about eating people in that dirty fucking kitchen in this disgusting fucking apartment, like it just, like I want to hose everyone down on the screen. It's just like, ah, it makes me a little queasy. Yeah. And that, that yellow jaundiced palette, color palette of the story. Like that's just, uh, depressing. But again, it's Halloween. Like, what do you want to do? Um, what was I going to say? Someone asked me a question that prompted, no. Oh yeah. Gay ice cream today. I am off the sugars for a while. Here's the story. When I was wearing a suit every day, this is a gift of wearing tailored clothing instead of rubber clothing that stretches. Um, when I was wearing a suit every day, it's a great way to monitor your weight. You know, and so if like one week, the pants on my suit started feeling a little tight, like I'd back off sugar. Like, oh, okay, we gotta dial down. Stop it, Lenore, Jesus. Um, I would uh, dial down the carbs and the sugar. Um, and because I'm wearing those tailored garments every day, you feel it. So if anything starts to get remotely snug, just make an adjustment. They're like, oh, I'm going to do another extra 10 minutes on the bike and maybe cut down on sugar. And like in a few days, it's fine. You know, I went through a period of months where I didn't wear my suits. I was just wearing like my jeans, you know, good shoes and a t-shirt. And I put on, and also I quit smoking. And I put on one of my suits and I, like the pants were tight and I, like the I buttoned the jacket and it was like, not just snug, it was tight. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. I am ordinarily, I've never really struggled with my weight. I am a slim guy, but one of the gifts <laughs> of tailored clothing, and I needed to just start getting back to it, is that wearing those clothes every day, you feel it. And, um, you know, I, I think, uh, so I'm on a strict, not a crash diet and I'm not starving myself. I am doing the occasional um, uh, fast, like skipping a meal. Like I'm not gonna eat anything until lunchtime today. Um, I just had a little collagen powder in my coffee. That's about it. But um, Lenore, you, honey, you've got to stop charging ahead because you're going to drive yourself and me crazy. Stop trying to charge ahead. You're not getting anywhere. You're not getting anywhere. You're not getting anywhere. No, we're not going left. We're going right. No. Gosh, she keeps trying to run shit. She's in one of those moods. Um, I love you, baby, but you just woke up on the coked up side of the bed this morning. Maybe it's the brisk air that's got her all amped up. Uh, yeah. So I'm want to start getting back to you know, you know, what's that lyric in that Justin Timberlake Jay Z tune? Tuxedos for no reason. <laughs> I love wearing suits, and I want to put them back on again once they fit again. So I'm slimming down, and then once I'm back down to my fighting weight, 
once I'm tightened up again. It was all, and it's all in the midsection, by the way. Like it's all in my middle. Like to look at me from a distance, you probably couldn't tell. But I can tell because it's this, it's my clothing. And that's not okay with me because I'm not into like excusing weight gain for myself. I'm just only speaking for myself. Like what is acceptable to me is what matters. And I just need to, I like to keep it trim and tight. You know, and no, I don't have body dysmorphia. I know that I'm not overweight. Even I could gain another five pounds. I'm not overweight. Um, but I'm not, um, it's just my own personal standards. That's all. It's about what works for me. And I'm not going to go down that fucking lazy, sad rabbit hole of stretchy clothes. And just going, this is, I'm just going to wear pajamas every day. It's all about sweatpants every day for me. I'm like, wow. That's a boner killer. Way to be a walking vaginal drying agent. Like, wow. Just, I'm not into sex anymore. I'm just into sweatpants and Crocs. Really? Jesus. Walk around. I like to look around. Everybody looks like they've been up all night cramming for a midterm exam. <sighs> Let's bring sexy back, you guys. P.S. Speaking of bringing sexy back, I'm going to take a little break from the politics for a second. Do y'all selves a favor, if you haven't already. Right here on YouTube, actually. Ralph Lauren's Spring Summer 2023 fa collection, the fashion show that he did out in um, LA. Is it, was it the Huntington Library? Is that that building? Beautiful setting. Holy fucking shit. Did you see the goddamn clothes? Now, Ralph Lauren has always been like the master of American, like very American glamour. And um, he just like, and it's also, it's not about buying the clothes. I mean, it's like, it's crazy expensive. It's stupid, like $800 for a pair of jeans. Like you're out of your mind. Um, it's not about that. It's about appreciating the craft, the artistry. He nailed it, that kind of glamour. And it's also like the Ralph Lauren look is, um, He just, he, it's hard, I'm, I'm struggling with how to describe it. He is the master of really nailing that very American glamour. And it's just beautiful to look at. It was a celebration. I mean, we're coming out of a pandemic. Um, and, you know, this burst of color for a spring and summer collection. It's California. Like it's, you know, California soul. And, um, it's terrific. So you could search here on YouTube and just watch it. The show is like 25 minutes long and the music's really great. Whoever was the music director and the DJ providing the music for the models to walk in, it was just like, it's a beautiful show. And Diane Keaton and J-Lo and Ben Affleck and Chastain are in the front row there, sitting across from the Lauren family. It was a hot show. Anyway, um, it was inspiring and it just, you know, I love looking at that because it makes me want to raise my own standards and just say, you know what, I'm gonna, I need to start giving more careful consideration into how I look and get the fuck out of Permanent Casual Friday because it is a boner killer. It is uninspiring. It is dull. It is boring. We need more in our lives. I need more in my life in terms of got to kick up the fucking glamour. It doesn't have to cost a lot. I have garments still from H&M because I bought them because, uh, you know, they had a look that I needed and liked at the time. And you could throw them away after every season if you want. It doesn't have to cost a lot. You know, my underwear is from Uniqlo. I just, why was I wearing something from Zara that I bought like a long time ago that I still have? So it's not about spending a shit ton of money. My t-shirts are from J. Crew Factory. My underwear is medical, my jeans, you know, I do spend money where it counts. Like I like my jeans to last. So I buy real good denim jeans. Like these are my Tellison jeans. I fucking love these 16 ounce denim. It's crazy. And they're expensive jeans, but I'm going to have these for a very, very long time. And I'm wearing these boots. I guess I should show you. Oh, this is a barber jacket. It's wax canvas. I love this thing. So if we get a little drizzle, no matter. It's a perfect autumn and I love the plaid lining. It's almost like Burberry in there, but it ain't. Um, but what I want to show you, these boots. <clears throat> the 
these are my um, Chippewa boots. I've had these for a few years. I take care of them, I oil them every year. Lenore, we're not going that way, Dum Dum. Um, I oil them every year and, um, you know, spend money where it counts. Garden Keeper says it. She gets it. He gets it. Pardon me if I. They get it. I gotta hit all the gender buttons. Um, so, yeah buy good clothes that are gonna last. And Ralph Lauren's clothing is good clothing. Like the tailoring lines are really good. I've always been a big fan of Ralph Lauren. Tom Ford's another one. Tom Ford kicks into a glamour on a very different level. It's a little flashier maybe. Sharper lines, yeah. I love dressing up. Michael Kors does it well, too. He didn't know another one I really enjoy, and it took me a while to really start to appreciate it, this Tom Brown's shows. Like, the shows are fucking theater. His shows are art. Like, that is theater. And people love to make fun of fashion, and, you know, there's a lot to make fun of there. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, a lot of it is re-fucking-diculous. But Tom Brown is an art. Like, that's... It's commerce gotta make money with those shows it's art like that guy's having fun <laughs> and you just got to go on that journey with him and enjoy the show Ralph Lauren much more uh, wearable and commercial and approachable and I'd uh, like enjoy the show it's fucking gorgeous and there's nothing wrong with wanting to look like that it's aspirational you know it keeps us moving forward but the thing about it is that it's um, it's uh, it's approachable and in terms of aesthetics, attainable. Like you can get those looks without spending that kind of a money, that, that kind of money, you know? So enjoy that stuff and go look at it. When you're done watching me or if you get time later, go to, uh, go to Ralph Lauren's YouTube channel and you'll see that show. Oh, babies. Oh, baby girl. She wants to play with another dog, so. Understated elegance, that's a great way to put it. How come you're single? You're a lovely guy, you're very nice to say that. How come I'm single? <laughs> you're gonna have to ask the last guy I fell in love with who turned me down. They all turned me down. I don't know why I'm single. You're gonna have to ask the last guy who said no. I'll give you his number and say, how come you chose someone else and not George? Because I don't know. Anyway. Um, so I just get used to being single and I presume that I'm just gonna like be a single person. Fuck it. I don't care. Look at this. Look at this. Look at the colors here. We're starting to see some change. I want to share this with you. Look at this gorgeous New York City scene. Ah! Someone said the right person hasn't shown up for you. Honey, I'm gonna be 52 next month. It's getting a little late. Um... Let's see. Look at this color. Look at the colors. Look at this. Ah. Uh, look at this gorgeous New York City fucking. Being single rocks. I agree. Because I get to have all the anonymous hate sex. Like, I enjoy my sex life. Unlike coupled people or married people who are like, who is it, Rob Delaney, who just said it best? <laughs> like, you know, you just pair off and you masturbate about things that aren't each other. <laughs> that doesn't happen to me yet. I'm not, um, I'm not, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not paired off with someone and then masturbating about someone else. Like, no, I don't, I haven't fallen down that hole yet. Oh, God. Look, at, all right. I said early, earlier that there's no color, but look at this. Color. Color. Look at this. Over there, we're starting to see some color. Look at the color. <laughs> Look at there's color. Oh, you guys, it's so fabulous. I love this. How much time we got here? All right, we've been on for 25 minutes almost. It's a long walk. I'm sorry, I'm going, I'm carrying on like a fucking fool. Um, 
Let's see, I noticed people attending the NYC Ballet Sunday afternoon very dressed up. That's nice, it should be. You should dress the fuck up, especially when you're going to see, like, uh, the high arts. Show up! And again, you don't have to spend money. It doesn't have to be expensive. I'll give you a little tip. I bought two suits from J. Crew last month because it was the end of summer and they were on sale, so I'm not really going to get to enjoy them until next spring and summer, but they were these cotton linen suits. Each of them were under, I spent under $400 for two cotton linen suits. Like, you know, two button, light, unlined, except for the sleeves. You gotta line the sleeves because you gotta be able to slip a sleeve in while you're putting the jacket on. But, like, they're so great. Casual suits, but I gotta get the pants tailored. Very similar to, like, Daniel Craig's corduroy suit in the beginning of No Time to Die, that tan suit that he gets blown up in when he goes to visit Vesper's grave. Um, but like that kind of a flavor, but very much a suit, but casual. J. Crew, I got a tan one and I got a navy one. They're not expensive. So now I've got like a, like a unstructured, light, breezy summer, spring summer suits to wear. And I also have a linen one. So like, I'm good, like I'm all set. You know, and it didn't cost a lot. Both of those suits, the jackets fit great, like out of the box. I'm lucky, but the pants need to be sucked in a little bit. Um, someone says, let's see, Get says, M Get says, the shoes are the most important. Oh, God, yeah, 100%. I'm not into the sneakers thing. It's, you know, I like, I do spend money on shoes, meaning I don't spend a lot of money regularly. Like the shoes I have, cost money and I'm going to have them for the rest of my life. I'm specifically talking about uh, my wingtips and chukka boots and dress shoes from Alden and Crockett and Jones. You know, you're talking anywhere between four or five hundred to eight hundred dollars a pair. That's a shit ton of money. Lenore, you got to chill out, girl. Um, that's a lot of money for shoes, but I'm going to have them for the rest of my life. They're fabulous shoes. And they go with almost everything from suits to um, jeans. You know, I love them. Love, 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 love them. And uh, cordovan leather, I don't like, I don't buy leather often. I really try to dial that down. And cordovan leather is from the hind quarters of a horse when the horse is near the end of its life. So it's, you know, that's one of the reasons it's so expensive is because it's very rare. You know, so yeah. Spend money on shoes. Get good shoes. Enough with the sneakers. And also, guys, 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 and then we'll change subjects because we talk a lot about clothes here. Um, enough with the tan shoes. Your shoe should not be lighter than your pants or your suit. Enough with the tan shoes. Like I, like I get so discouraged when I see these guys in like a gray suit, like a dark gray suit or a navy suit, like a dark suit. Lenore. I'm gonna drug you. Um, um, and they wear these like light tan shoes or very light brown shoes that are like the color of baby poop. Like, don't, stop it. Who sold you these? No, 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 no. Dark, and for some reason somebody got this, somebody passed around this bullshit memo that black is bad when it comes to shoes. Wrong, black, especially in the city, fabulous. So if you're gonna get dress shoes, get rid of those tan ones, unless you're wearing them with a tan suit. And uh, go dark. I have black shoes, I have dark, dark brown, like cigar brown, and cordovan, which looks like black in some light, but it's really like a blood red, like ox blood. Cordovan is a really, really dark, dark, dark burgundy. Fabulous but not light brown. No, stop it with those. Stop it, they look terrible. Ah, oh, all right, that's it. I have talked too long, you guys. Thank you for tuning in. You can tip, uh, there's a little tip jar here on YouTube. You can throw some coins in. Uh, also, if you're on my Patreon, you're already subscribing and thank you very much. Um, and you can also go to georgehan.com forward slash support and you'll get a couple of options. There's like a light flicker. Oh, I know what that is. Oh my God, you guys. <laughs> Sorry. 
Shoes the color of baby poop. Yeah, that's that brown. It's awful. That light brown that guys wear. It's terrible. Stop it. Don't. Don't let salesmen or ads tell you that it, like, no. You know why? All right, and then I'll really let this go. Because when you see a guy wearing those light shoes, the first thing you notice are his feet. We shouldn't notice your feet. That shouldn't be the first thing our eye goes to. The first thing our eye should go to is your face. But when you wear shoes that are so much lighter than your suit or your pants, our eyes go right to your feet. Why do you want us to look at your feet? Stop it. Nope. It's distracting. The point is to get people to look at your face. Anyway, um, go to georgehan.com forward slash support. Thank you very much. Uh, you can do a monthly subscription, Patreon, or you can just do a one-time thing. Um, those options are right there. The one-time thing is the blue button. The subscription one is the red Patreon button. And I really appreciate it because I like making content. Like, very loud guy here. Speaking a language I, I can't even begin. Um, Wow, that's some loud shit. Look at the look at the uh, super talls, the rich bitch dormitories. Um, but uh, like, this is my job now. I this is I make content. Like people are like, what do you do for a living? I'm like, I make content, and I try to keep it interesting. I try to have provide. I try to add value. Add value, unlike Elon Musk, who adds volatility. God, that guy loves chaos and attention. And we give it to him. Woo! I'm telling you, man. I would not. <laughs> I would not. Oh, that's a gorgeous horse. Um, I would not invest in anything. Like, I would never get into business with Elon because he says left and then it ends up going right. You know what I mean? Like, it's not. Oh, he's all about volatility. Volatile and toxic. Like, you never. Like, he is like a box of Forrest Gump chocolate. You never know what you're going to get with that one. Certainly never what he actually says. Whoosh. So unlike Elon, I try to add value, consistent value. And another reminder before I go, yeah, we're hit, we're over the 30 minute mark. Um, reconnect with nature. Like here we are in Central Park. It is important to connect with nature. Go to the Brooklyn Botanic Gardens, like my friend Adrian showed me the other day, uh, or wherever you are walk through the park get some green space in scott galloway's been showing videos where he's enjoying the green space around him in london um and it looks so great um it's important to connect with nature and enjoy green space it just it really it does a lot for the soul so big recommendations on that thank you for joining me um in, <laughs> and oh Vanessa good one enraged instead of engaged that's what he does flossed and glossed um, let's see all right and that's it all right guys thank you so much for watching uh, I'm gonna take the dogs home I'm gonna start I got oh uh, there's a new episode of pivot today Scott and Kara um, every Tuesday and Friday devoted listener that's me not only do I guest co-host sometimes, I'm an avid fan and listener. So I'm gonna finish listening to today's episode and um, I got work to do. Thank you so much, it's always such a pleasure. And we had cooperative weather today. All right, bye.